What's up guys, my name is Josiah Martin and today you're hanging out with the Alaskan Outsider. Right now I'm in Portage, Alaska and we're about to take off on snow machines to go across rivers, lakes, and this long marsh stretch to find the amazing Spencer Glacier. But what I wanna do for you guys is test out this new Sandmark ND variable filter. So I'm gonna be taking it out with us today, put it through the test, see how it works. I'm gonna be giving you some test footage of with and without it on. I'll also talk about when and where you might want an ND filter and when and where you might not. Now, if you wanna see the full snow machining adventure out to Spencer Glacier, you can click up there to see that video. But otherwise, let's talk about this variable ND filter and see what it can do. And if you stick around to the very end of this video, I am gonna be giving one of these Sandmark variable ND filters away. So stick around for the giveaway announcement at the end of this video and let's get to it. We made it to the railroad tracks and we've actually been driving along them for a little bit. It's kind of cool during June through September, you can actually take the Alaska Railroad all the way out here to come to Spencer Glacier. And so we're almost here, just another mile to get over to Spencer Lake and then we'll see Spencer Glacier. Here we are, we're in the belly of the beast, standing underneath of the glacier. Obviously this is super dangerous, but everything you do in life has its risks, so take your risks responsibly. Gage, what is it like being here underneath an Alaskan glacier? Amazing, it's incredible. So a variable ND filter is really the only way you're gonna be able to get me to put an ND filter on my GoPro. Like, let's say I'm out there and I've got my ND8 on there and it's kind of sunny, so I have to take it off, get my backpack out, get the ND filter kit out, and swap it to an ND16. Oh, now the clouds are coming out. All right, let's put the ND4 on there. And it's just not worth it for me to stop what I'm doing when I'm out there having fun to fiddle around with changing out ND filters. But the benefit to having this variable ND filter is that all you would have to do is just rotate the ND filter and it blocks more or less light. All right, here I am standing in the shade, a little bit of sunlight coming through on my face, but uh, ND filter's looking good. So far it's working out here on the trails. All right, same shot, standing here in the shade, a little bit of sunshine, no ND filter. Can you tell a big difference? But now you may be asking, why would I even want to fiddle with this at all? Doesn't GoPro footage just look like GoPro footage? And you do have somewhat of a point, but if you're someone like me that occasionally uses the GoPro in professional shoots for local companies and commercials that I'm making, then you want to get the best footage out of the GoPro that you possibly can for your clients. And maybe it's not even for a client, maybe it's just for your own personal videos, but you want the absolute best quality possible when you're out there filming then that's where an ND filter can help you get the most out of your footage. Today's not the best example of when an ND filter should be used because it is super flat and overcast right now. It really does help the most on a really bright sunny day. It helps cut down the glare from the sun on the lens and it also helps control the exposure. In filmmaking, we're always trying to achieve motion blur, which is when you have the shutter speed at double the frame rate. So if I'm out filming at 60 frames per second, I would want my digital shutter speed to be at 120. But if it's really bright and sunny out, you're never gonna get a shutter speed of 120 on a GoPro unless you slap on this variable ND filter. Filter. It'll stop back the light and help you achieve more natural looking footage. Another benefit of ND filters helps with lens flares from the sun. So a lens flare on a GoPro never really looks that great. The flare kind of looks blocky and anyway, not that good. But if you slap on an ND filter, it does not improve the look of your lens flare. Ideally, I'd rather be shooting on a camera like I am right now to be getting those really crisp, incredible lens flares on some expensive glass. But if you're out all day only shooting on a GoPro, this does help your lens flares look a little better. And as I briefly mentioned before, I really do like this variable ND filter because you're not having to mess around 
if the lighting changes. All you have to do is just adjust that dial. It goes from an ND8 to an ND64, which gives you a range of blocking down three to six stops of light, which is a pretty good range. So if it's a more cloudy day, you'd be able to use it. Or if it's high noon in Arizona, you would also be able to use this ND filter as well. Although I don't know why you would wanna be in Arizona because it's like 120 degrees there. It's not fun. I'd rather be out here in beautiful Alaska. So if you are someone that wants to get the most out of your GoPro, then I would say it's worth considering checking out this variable ND filter. And if you like these videos and want to support the channel, you can go down in the description below where you can see the links to the gear that I use and any purchase that you make using those links does help me out and supports the channel so I can keep bringing more awesome Alaskan adventures to you. And now I'd like to give one of these variable ND filters away to one of you that are watching this video. So all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to the channel like this video and comment down below, I'm an Alaskan outsider too. And in two weeks from the publishing of this video, I'll randomly select one of you guys to win this filter and I'll get in the mail shipped right to your house. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you wanna see the rest of my snow machining trip, you can do that. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next Alaskan adventure.